In Genesis chapter 3, we read about sin being introduced into the world. And just three chapters later, the sins of man have progressed to such a point that it says that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it was because of this great wickedness that God decided to destroy mankind. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals to creeping things and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. Now in the next chapter, God sent a flood to destroy the world and all of mankind. But Noah and his household were spared. Genesis 6 and verse 8 says that Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. We read a few things about Noah before, during, and after the flood that show how he was different from the ones who perished and why he found favor with God and was saved. Number one was that he walked with God. These are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah walked with God. We already noticed the severe corruption of mankind that existed in that time, but Noah did not allow his society to influence him. He did not walk in the ways of the world. He walked with God. And for this reason, God offered salvation to him, if he would take advantage of it. Then the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this time. Number two, Noah obeyed God. After telling Noah that he was going to destroy the earth with a flood, God gave him instructions about building the ark. He gave him the floor plans, the dimensions, the type of wood to use, the number of animals to bring on the ark, and so on. And after receiving these instructions, Noah did what God told him to do. Thus Noah did according to all that God had commanded him, so he did. So while Noah found favor or grace in the eyes of the Lord, he still needed to obey him so that he would not perish in the flood. The Hebrew writer described the faith of Noah and how he prepared an ark for the salvation of his household. He received grace, but he had to obey God in order to take advantage of that grace. Number three, Noah waited for God. The flood began in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month and on the 17th day of the month. Then after the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, Noah sent out a raven and then a dove to find out if the earth was inhabitable again. And then after this, Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the surface of the ground was dried up. And this took place in the 601st year, in the first month, on the first day of the month. So after being confined to the ark for almost a year... We might expect that Noah was eager to get off and immediately leave the ark as soon as he knew that the ground was dry, but he didn't. Instead, he waited almost two months for God to give him instructions to leave. He did not presume to know what was right. He waited for God's commands. In number four, Noah sacrificed to God. The first thing we read about Noah doing after leaving the ark was that he built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Serving God and offering worship to him was not an afterthought for Noah. It took precedence over everything else. So we can learn a lot from Noah's example. Just as Noah lived in an exceedingly wicked time, we live, as Paul described in Philippians 2.15, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. And as Noah found favor before God, we have God's grace that has been extended to us. But in order to take advantage of God's grace, we need to be like Noah. Noah walked with God, and we need to walk in the light as he himself is in the light. Noah did according to all that God had instructed him to do. And we must obey the Lord and follow the pattern that he has left for us. The Hebrew writer said that Jesus is to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation. Noah did not act presumptuously and assume to know what would please God. And we are not to be presumptuous either, but we must do all things in the name of, which means by the authority of the Lord Jesus. And for Noah, his service to God came first. And we need to have our priorities in order so that we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we can be saved as Noah was, if we will serve the Lord 
as Noah did. 